Kick splash, kick splash. I'm swimming. Oh, you can't be swimming. There's no water. Well, I'm pretending. We splash. Now what are you doing? Diving. Whoopee. Oh, I think it's time we had a seaside holiday again. Then you can do some real swimming and diving. Oh, yes, Doris. Do you remember our last holiday? Of course I do. That was when I found Mr Echo's cave. <laughs> Morris and Jane and I were going on holiday to the seaside. We had packed our buckets and spades and our fishing nets too, and Trevor the train was going to take us there. We waited and waited for Trevor, but he didn't turn up. At last, Morris and I got so impatient that we said a spell. fee fi fo and fiddle dee dee take Morris and Doris off to the sea. In a moment, Morris and I found ourselves on a lovely beach. But there was no sign of Jane anywhere. Oh dear, said Morris. I think Jane will have to wait for Trevor now. Why don't you go and explore, Doris, and I will stay here until Jane arrives. picked up my bucket and spade and fishing net and scrambled off over the rocks. I stopped to look in the little rock pools. I could see pink and green seaweed growing in them and tiny fish darting about. I moved a stone and a crab scuttled away. This is fun, I thought. Morris and Jane are missing a treat. Then I saw a great big cave. I walked up to it and looked inside. It was dark and cold, and I could hear the plop, plop of dripping water. This is a bit spooky, I said. At once, a voice replied, Spooky, spooky, spooky. Hello, I called. Back came the voice. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, it must be an echo, I said. Yes, yes it, is, it is, said the voice. That's funny, I said. Echoes should only say what I say. Not, Not in, in Mr. Mr. Echo's, Echo's cave, cave, said the voice. And this time it was right behind me. I turned round and saw a little man with a pointed beard. He was green all over. Hello, Hello. he said. I'm, I'm Mr. Mr. Echo. Echo. Welcome, Welcome to, to my, my cave. cave. Oh, hello, I said. I'm Doris, the magic hamster. Could you please, please show me how to make echoes like you? I can, I can indeed, indeed, said Mr. Echo. But, but only, only because, because your you're magic, magic like me. me. Now, now, cup your, your hands, hands or your, or your paws, paws, round, round your, your mouth, mouth, wiggle, wiggle your, your toes, toes as hard as you can, as you can and say and something. Say something. Then, then you can you make, make echoes, echoes anywhere, anywhere you, you want. want. Oh, thank you, Mr. Echo, I said. I ran back along the beach and saw Morris and Jane. They were eating ice creams. Hello, Doris, said Jane. I've only just got here. Trevor didn't turn up and I had to take the magic mountain bus. It's awfully slow. Never mind, I cried. Look what I can do. I took Morris's empty ice cream cone, cupped my paws round it, wiggled my toes and said, Hello. An echo came back out of the ice cream cone. Hello, hello, hello. Gosh, that's clever, said Morris. Where did you learn that? Follow me, I said. We all rushed along the beach to Mr Echo's cave. Mr Echo was standing outside in the sunshine. Mr Echo, I said, may I take my brother Morris and our friend Jane into your cave to make echoes? 
Certainly, Certainly Doris, Doris, said Mr Echo, and he waved us in. We had a lovely time calling out and waiting for the Echo to come back. Hello, Hello. It's I'm me. Doris. Hello. I'm Hello. Hello. And Mr Echo showed Morris how to make echoes anywhere at all, just like I could. So, the next time you go to the seaside, go into a cave and shout. If you hear an echo coming back, you know you're in Mr Echo's cave. Funny, Doris, there's no echo coming back to me. That's because you've forgotten Mr Echo's special spell. Oh. To make ordinary echoes, you've got to be in an echoey place, like a cave. Can't you make echoes in the open air? Well, yes, you can, if you stand on a hill and, well, listen to Stephen's song. I sang from the top of a tall, tall hill and over the valley below. Cuckoo, hello, cuckoo, hello, cuckoo, hello, hello. And what did I hear from a small, small hill far away in the distant view? Hello, cuckoo, hello, cuckoo, hello, cuckoo, cuckoo. And as my voice came echoing back from that hill where I heard it go, I sang hello, echo, hello, hello, echo, hello, hello, echo, echo, hello, hello, echo, hello. Doris? Do you remember the holiday we made friends with those funny little star-shaped creatures? Yes, Bubble and Squeak, the two little starfish. Bubble and Squeak, that's right. I wonder what's happened to them. I think Carol knows. Oh, goody! Come on, Carol, tell us what's happened to those starfish. All right. The story's called Bubble and Squeak's Party. <laughs> One morning, Bubble looked at her calendar. Oh, Squeak! Today is Sean the Prawn's birthday. We nearly forgot. Squeak shook all the money from their cockle shell savings bank. Now, let's go shopping for a present for Sean, he said. They went to Mr Crab, the newsagent. We're looking for a birthday present for Sean the Prawn, said Bubble. Have you got a card yet? asked Mr Crab. Oh dear, we forgot about that, said Squeak. Can we have this one, please? They continued along the main street. Oh, Squeak, cried Bubble. We must buy that lovely cake for Sean the Prawn. They went to the sweet shop. Soon Squeak was loaded up with bags of chocolate shells, sherbet shrimps and jelly fish. Oh dear, said Squeak. We haven't bought Sean a real present yet. Let's go to the toy shop, said Bubble. The shelves were packed with underwater toys. There were paddling pools, fish tanks, rubber rings and fishing rods. This is all our money, said Squeak. I'm afraid you can only buy a pack of balloons with that, said the assistant. Oh, that isn't very exciting sighed Squeak. But look, said Bubble, we've got all we need for a lovely birthday party. It didn't take long to invite all their friends and soon Sean the Prawn arrived to find out where everybody was. 
Surprise! Surprise! They cried when he came in. Thanks to Bubble and Squeak, Sean had his best birthday ever. little fish they are. Yes, but they're very devoted. They always do everything together. Even silly things? Yes, when they do silly things together, they cause double trouble. Bubble and squeak, squeak and bubble. When they're around, you know that trouble's not far behind. Squeak and bubble, bubble and squeak. Always together, always up the creek. Sometimes they forget things, sometimes they get lost. But they always do duet things as upon the waves they're tossed. They're the sort of starfish who like to work in pairs. They're really quite bizarrefish, but they never put on airs. Oh, squeak and bubble, bubble and squeak. Always together, always up the creek. Squeak and bubble, bubble and squeak. Always together, always up the creek. Morris! Doris? Where are you? Boo! Surprise! Hello, Jane! Oh, you frightened me. I thought I heard singing. You did hear singing. Shall we sing some more? Yes, let's. What shall we sing? I know. Row your boat. Oh, yes! Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Did you like it, 
it, Jane? Oh, yes. I like anything to do with the sea. Oh, do you know the story of Sinbad? Sinbad? No. Who's he? Sinbad the sailor. Listen to Nigel's story. Sinbad and the whale. Sinbad the sailor loved the sea more than anything. One day, he went down to the port at Baghdad and joined a ship that was bound for a distant land. Welcome aboard, Sinbad, said the captain as they set sail. We are happy to have such a great sailor as you among us. <laughs> and I am happy to be sailing the seven seas once more, said Sinbad. They sailed for many weeks, and the sun grew hotter and hotter in the brilliant blue sky. One morning, as Sinbad was looking out to sea, he called out, Land ahoy! The crew cheered and rushed to the side of the ship. The captain looked through his telescope, and sure enough, there was a small island some distance away. Make for the island, he ordered and we'll go ashore and rest for a few hours. Soon, Sinbad, the captain, and all the crew were wading ashore, carrying food and a barrel of beer. The sailors set to work to build a fire, and Sinbad wandered off to explore by himself. As he walked, he noticed that there was smooth grey rock, not sand under his feet. How strange, he said to himself. I thought all the islands in this part of the ocean had sandy beaches. Just then, there was a loud whooshing sound, and Sinbad felt himself rising up in the air, lifted on a great jet of water. Help! What? What? what what's happening? He called out. And then, ouch! As he landed back on the rock with a sharp bump, he jumped to his feet and looked around, and almost fell over again. The whole island was moving, Sinbad started to run back towards the captain and crew, slipping and falling as he went. As he got closer to the sailors, he could see that they were already splashing and swimming back to the boat. Somebody cried out, It's a whale! It's a whale! Not an island! Wait for me! cried Sinbad in terror. But it was too late. The anchor had been pulled up and the ship was sailing away. The next moment, Sinbad found himself tossed into the foaming sea. Great waves broke over his head as the whale thrashed and beat its gigantic body. But something else was bobbing about in the sea near Sinbad. It was the empty barrel of beer. Sinbad clambered onto it, letting the sea carry him where it would. All night long, he drifted with the current. And as the sun rose the next day, he saw that he was floating towards an island. He paddled in closer to the shore until the barrel touched the beach. Simbad tumbled on the golden sand. He stood up and stretched and breathed a huge sigh of relief. Ah! <sighs> he looked from one end of the shore to the other then down at the golden sand at his feet. He bent down and ran his fingers through the sand. It was very fine and soft and glistening, like gold dust. Why, he said aloud, it is, it is gold dust. Then this must be the land of the sea serpents, where every grain of sand is pure gold and guarded by monster snakes. He looked around, then hurriedly began to fill up his pockets with gold dust. A cold shiver ran down his spine, and again he looked around. There were one, two, three pairs of glittering eyes staring at him. The eyes of three sea serpents. Simbad's heart leapt in terror. In a flash, he pushed the barrel back into the sea and jumped inside it. 
the serpents glided after the barrel, circling round and round, so that it bobbed up and down like a cork. But they could not bite it with their teeth or break it in their coils. And one by one, they slid back to the golden shores of their island. Sinbad, safe inside the barrel, bobbed further and further out to sea. He floated along for three days and nights, sometimes sleeping, sometimes gazing at the horizon for signs of a sail. On the fourth morning, he was woken from a doze by a sudden bump. Look out! came a voice from overhead. Sinbad looked up to see the wooden side of a ship and faces peering down at him. He jumped up, shouting and waving. Yeah, it was his own ship. It's Sinbad! He's alive! shouted everyone. Let down the ladder! ordered the captain. And Sinbad scrambled on board. Tell us what happened. How did you escape from the whale? asked the captain. I have more than just that adventure to tell you about, said Sinbad, smiling. He felt in his pocket and brought out a handful of fine, glistening gold dust. The eyes of the captain and crew grew rounder and rounder with surprise. And they all sat cross-legged on the deck as Sinbad began to tell them what had happened after he escaped from the whale. Morris, have you got a bucket? Yes, and a spade. In fact, I've got three spades. Well, find a stick then. Why? Because you only need a bucket, some spades and a stick to play super games on the beach. Listen to the rhyme. Rhyme time! Hooray! Beach games. Down on the beach, out on the sand, what do you need to make the day grand? Three little spades, make up a wicket. Add bat and ball, you're ready for cricket. Find a big bucket to go with a spade. Fill it, then turn it, your sandcastle's made. Mark out some boxes, a stick will do fine. Now enjoy hopscotch, don't step on a line. Dig a huge hole, then wait for the tide. You'll soon have a lake for sitting beside. You and a friend jump over each other. Leapfrog's the game, too lively for mother. Bury your granddad, just for a joke. Leave room for his head, he might want to smoke. I've got a riddle for you, Doris. What's the strongest animal in the world? Um, the elephant? No. Uh, the lion? No. Oh, I give up. What is the strongest animal in the world? Well, it must be the tortoise, mustn't it? Why? Because the tortoise carries her house on her back. Ah, <laughs> yes. Listen to Denise's story. Tilly's Shell House. Tilly the tortoise lived by the seaside. She carried her house on her back everywhere she went. Every sunny day she would sunbathe on the beach and eat lots of ice cream to keep cool. One very hot day, Tilly was lying on the golden sand as usual. I think I'll take my shell off, she said. Nobody else wears their house on their back. So she took off her shell. Underneath, she was wearing a blue and white spotted swimsuit. That's better, said Tilly. Now, all I need is my sun hat and a book. The sun got hotter and hotter, and soon Tilly had fallen into a deep sleep. The big blue waves began to creep up the beach. They got closer and closer to Tilly, but she didn't wake up. The waves tickled Tilly's feet, but still she didn't wake up. Finally, the waves washed around Tilly's shell and slowly carried it out to sea. Splash! Suddenly, a big wave soaked Tilly, and she jumped up. Oh, you naughty wave, 
she cried. And I was having a lovely sleep, too. Then she noticed her shell had gone. Tilly ran to the sea wall, but she didn't find her shell there. She looked up and down the beach, but it wasn't there either. Oh, where is that silly little house of mine? she sighed. Far out to sea, Tilly's shell bobbed up and down on the waves. A seagull saw it and thought it was a nest. What a nice, quiet place to lay my eggs, she thought. But Tilly's shell bobbed up and down so much that the seagull couldn't get comfortable. So she gave up and flew away. A baby whale came swimming by. Oh, God, he said when he saw the shell. Something nice for my lunch. He gobbled up Tilly's shell, but it was much too hard for his baby teeth, so he spat it out and dived beneath the waves. Just then, a shoal of fish swam by. They looked up from under the water, and there, upside down on Tilly's shell, they read Tilly's house. Look, cried one of the fish. Tilly's shell has floated out to sea. We must take him back to her. So all the fish flapped their fins to make waves. Slowly the shell floated back to shore. Oh, thank you, fish, said Tilly. And she gave them each a lick of her ice cream. Now I'm going to find somewhere dry to sunbathe. Goodbye, Tilly, said the fish. Don't forget your shell. How could I, said Tilly. After all, it is my house. Jane, will you sing us a bedtime song? Well, I'd love to, but... I'm just too tired. Oh, Morris, will you sing us a song? No fear. I'm going swimming again. Splash, oh. kick, splash, oh. kick. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Who's going to sing us our bedtime song? Look, here comes Nigel. Oh, Nigel. Nigel, will you sing us a song, please? All right. It's called Dance to Your Daddy. Dance to your daddy, my little babby. Dance to your daddy, my little lamb. You shall have a fishy in a little dishy. You shall have a fishy when the boat comes in. Dance to your daddy, my little babby. Dance to your daddy, my little lamb. Dance to your daddy, my little babby. Dance to your daddy, my little lamb. Goodbye, Goodbye everybody. everybody. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. Soon.